You're now tuned into Mikey Check Mikey's Life 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 Life. Life. Mike check, Mike check, waifu, waifu, H-Town Telly, is that you? What's up, man? What's <laughs> up, man? We here, we in Houston. It's nice, it's nice out here. I got a tan. I'm a little, dark, a little bit dark. You can't see it. You can't tell. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to episode 100 of Mike, Mike, Mike check. Check, check, check. We appreciate y'all so much for rocking with us. Y'all have been so supportive. It means so very much to us that you got us as far as you, you guys got us. Episode 100, we planned on doing a live stream, but it was kind of like hard to do with the situation that one of our hosts is in right now. So we just want to say we thank you from the bottom of our heart for like supporting us through 100 episodes of the show. We've seen nothing, nothing but steady growth for the podcast. And it's been it's been crazy just watching it because it's literally like month over month over month over month episode per episode per episode listens going up and up and up and we can't thank you guys enough for supporting us and just wants to let you know that but this is episode 100 again thank you thank you all so much for supporting us i'm going to start off by saying obviously it's sponsored by lube complex shout out to lube complex they just sent me uh this nice hoodie you can't see the back of it, but the back is decked out as part of one of their new launches. And they sent me two flags of our of our girl back there. So make sure you guys check out the video version on our YouTube. Just search you might check white for white on YouTube and subscribe there. We would appreciate you. Oh man. It's also brought to you by Don't Talk Shop. That ad is coming later. And as well, let's talk about our Patreon supporters. So listen, you guys are the reason why the show goes on every month like it's, it's crazy the support we've been getting on patreon as well and we we thank you so much i do want to give a shout out to our patreon producers aaron brown connor explicitly monique williams sean t and treasus thank y'all so much for supporting this and many other episodes of the podcast and i also want to give another another very special shout out to our homie on the timeline shout out to moody senpai for joining the uh, Patreon and supporting us at the Senpai tier. Thank you so much for supporting us. She get access to the bonus podcast, early access to the video versions of this, and early access to our other content that comes exclusive to Patreon. So thank you so much for supporting us too, uh, Moody. We appreciate you. Love chopping anime with her on the timeline. She's the best. Right, Moody Senpai. Subscribe to Senpai. I like that. <laughs> it only it only fits. It's only right. Um. She's also one of my favorite cosplayers on the timeline. I said it. I said it. I'm sorry. I said it. I can rock with that. <laughs> All right. This is episode 100. Tell, man. Talk to me about the move, bro. You're in H town. So, bro. <laughs> Driving 12 hours is, is not for the weak of heart. Mm -hmm. Um you know, I don't drink energy drinks. I don't right. do coffee. I, I really don't do caffeine in general. Um, I had three energy drinks Damn. In the, on the drive. Um, unheard of for my, uh, for my toe. Like for real, like <laughs> it's really yeah. unheard of. <laughs> yeah. And, and the messed up part is, is realistically like I only, I really didn't, I guess I really didn't need them, but the, any kind of like slight, I feel a little bit of a yawn or a little bit tired. I was like, nope, no, give me, throw me that energy drink real quick. Yep. Cause we're not doing it. And then, you know, Monique got, got anxiety. So she's not going to be, she's not going to be happy to drive in that scenario. So I'm like, nah, let me go ahead and take care of this. We good. We made it. It was nice. Um, Monique was starting because every picture for every state line we crossed, she mm. missed every single one. Oh no. <laughs> was she like, sleep? I'm like, no, she was awake the whole time with me. And normally she sleeps when I drive. Mm -hmm. uh, but every single state, like when it hit Louisiana, I'm like, babe, they go Louisiana. She's like, wait, where's that? She pull out her phone. She hit the phone button and we go right past. I'm like, God. damn. I was telling her like in advance too. I'm like, it's coming up. Like, you know, ain't no real way to know it's coming up. But I'm mm -hmm. like, it's coming up. It's going to be here in like 10 miles or something like that. She's like, no, it's not. Oh, she keeping track on Snapchat and everything. <laughs> I'm like, it's coming up. 
she missed every single picture. Uh, even Texas, even the Texas picture when we got to Texas, it was, it was kind of crazy. <laughs> but uh, it's nice here, as y'all can see. I'm in an Airbnb right now because we we actually looking at uh, buying a house. We've been talking to some, some realtors and stuff. Oh, you're just going straight to buying a house, not even renting another spot. Well, we we looking at that too because we might have to rent, yeah. or we might have to stay in like an Airbnb for like another month or something like that. But that, yeah. that'll be fine because we can afford it right now. Right, so, right. Uh, do that. Um, we're looking at getting a house. We got a couple of really good offers in that we gave, mm-hmm. so hopefully something falls through for us. But so far it's nice it's nice in here like i said houston then gave me a suntan already <laughs> that's funny Down, downtown is beautiful um all the food in the world i can't wait till you get here polo yeah yeah it's gonna happen it's gonna happen my question for you is uh so uh what did i have i had i had a few questions lined up but then i just for, totally forgot about them all oh if y'all if y'all haven't noticed <laughs> tells mike sound different okay don't judge me don't judge him. <laughs> Obviously, the good Mike. We had an accident on the road. Something wrong with it's it. So back. it's coming back. We're gonna get the sound quality right. I'm edited the best of my ability. So what y'all are hearing probably actually sounds okay, but uh, for me, yikes. Uh, but yeah. So as far as like, what part of Houston are you in exactly right now? Like, we are in. It's it's really nice. It's like a you know how they do like the renovated areas, like it's a all like village area. Yeah. Uh, let me go on the map real quick. I ain't gonna show y'all exactly where I'm. Yeah, at. I went on exactly, kind of like a general area. Cause I know, um, Caddy Mount Park. Oh, okay, okay. Um, it's like in between Kenwood and Channel View. Okay, okay. But where we looking to go? is near Texas City. So that's like literally not even 10 miles from the ocean where the house we just put in a bid at. But we want to be at like Texas City, League City, maybe Santa Fe area. Mm. Amazing. Oh, yeah. So also, I didn't tell you this yet, but you know, obviously I'm becoming a personal trainer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you might as well go ahead and call me a personal trainer now. <laughs> I but am. Uh, <laughs> but um, I'm actually getting ready to take uh, massage therapy courses as well. Oh, and sick! Yeah, you know, bro, that's that's gonna be a whole other thing. So, personal trainer, massage therapy is the goal, and I got some other goals too, mm-hmm. like some ideas that I told Monique about, but I ain't gonna tell nobody else other than you. So, uh, We're I'm, 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 I'm let them ring, let them ring uh, okay. when when we get to talking. All right, we'll where, talk where, about where, where exactly? What part were you looking to like Pasadena? Pasadena. Uh, so there it is. It's a uh, West Houston. West Houston. West Houston. Yeah. So. So you like uh, near Sugarland? Yup. Yup. Okay, that's not. That's it's like 35, 40 minutes away. I think. Okay. I mean, not from where I'm at right now. Where I'm from right now is like 30 minutes, but mm-hmm. from where I'm looking to live, like 35, 40 minutes. So it's like an Akron trip, you know? Oh, yeah. It's nothing. It's nothing. Well, maybe not from Avon, but, you know, I get what you're trying to say. Yeah, not from Avon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but this is an anime podcast, I promise. Uh, we're here to talk about some anime that we've watched. Again, this is episode, it's still, it's, I am baffled that we got to 100 episodes. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about that, but I'm all, I want to talk about some anime. Um, there were some things that uh, Tell watched that uh, he wouldn't normally watch, and there was one that I've been putting on the back burner for a long time that I've watched as well. So Tell, I, w- I do want to start off with Haji Hero though because I just have to. I need to let's know what your, what your thoughts is. You're fully caught up. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Haji Hero. Shout out to Moody. I was talking to her on the on a on the timeline about this too. But what do you think about it? What do you think about it so far? Okay. So Haji Hero, in my personal opinion, is actually like really good. Yeah. Um that first episode I didn't know what to expect. Second episode I didn't know what to expect. Uh 
third episode felt like it really started to get into that area where it was like, this is more than what you think it is. Mm -hmm. This is like more detail, more serious. Yeah. Not, not as like, like, cause that first episode, although it seemed serious, it was like still kind of like funny right. and not sure in a way they had some unsettling moments in the first few episodes. This latest episode really pissed me off. Yeah. Almost made me want to uh, jump to the screen and be dude up the whole time. Whole time. Uh, but it is, it's a really, it's a really, really good anime and it actually feels wholesome. Like it feels just like endearing almost like I I sincerely hope at the end of this story that he's not trying to like wife this girl. Yes. Same. I hope they go their separate ways and he's like, I appreciate it. And they're like family here for, from like this point forward. Right. Um, Now, if it was like five years down the line and she's like, you know what? Like I went out and experienced life and I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll marry to, you now or something, stuff like that. Okay. I'll take got it there. to live her life. Yeah. As a, as yeah. a yeah, yeah. But that's, that's the whole point in this. He's helping her live her life. And yes. to me, that is such a actual beautiful thing. I was, I was, I felt like this is going to be like a grooming anime where he was grooming her to become nah, man, it's, it's, his future wife. And he's really adamant about saying like, nah, bro. Yeah. That's what, what we're doing. That's what makes this him such a good main you. character, right? Like, the, the fact that he's like I'm I'm not in this for anything else but to make you better but to save you make, make you a better human a better high school girl like I'm not trying right. to do anything else I don't care about anything else I just want to help you get better um, until there was you can a, move back there was a quote in the episode that I was like damn I need to take that but it was um when she went out with that girl Asami or whatever her name mm-hmm. is and she said her dad said your worries are nothing compared to the stars yeah man powerful and i'm just like your worries ain't nothing compared to the stars which is a fact it's a fact and i mean it's it the sad thing is it's a little belittling right Mm -hmm. like it, it does shit on your life a little bit but it's also like in the grand scheme of things perspective you look at these you look at these huge stars why am I so worried about all these things when these stars are like, I'm small. They can't even, I wouldn't even be a fathom. They couldn't even fathom the size of me because right. of how big they are. Right. So why would I even care? Yeah. Cause it's right. That whole conversation and slight spoilers, but the whole conversation that where she was talking to her dad about disappointing her mom, because she doesn't want to be a lawyer. It's mm-hmm. like, yo, you ain't don't even, like, don't worry about it. It was his secret way of trying to tell her not to worry about it. Do you? And I appreciate that. There, there's so much small stuff in there like that. That that's around uh, Sayu Chan that is like so perfect with teaching her how just how to be better. She just happens to come across like the right person at the right time in the right circumstance, even though oh. it's her whatever her background is, which seemed very dark. Um, it, it feels like her parents are abusive or even mm-hmm. if they're not abusive, they're negligent. Like they're not like Asami parents where one is a politician and lawyer. They're probably worse where like uh mom is probably jumping from household to household. Probably not even that. It could be worse. Dad could just be outright abusive. Um, I, th- I think it's but- something else. I think it's a situation to where her parents. You think she living that? You think she living that Drake in life? What, what you mean? Oh no, 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 no <laughs> not even close. That's, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, no, I, I'm thinking her mom and dad are like struggling. They're just barely meet, meeting ends meets. She and gets, she's leaving to kind of cut cut it close to them, make it easier for them. Not uh, just, let me get there. I'm thinking that she is was a terrible student a terrible kid at school made their life hard and she feels like after doing something like for some reason one flat that one flashback made me feel like that she was like a bully or something and she bullied somebody to committing suicide and then that caused trouble for her already struggling parents so that's why she decided to leave that's that's where i kind of my mind goes i don't know if this is true i haven't read anything i don't know anything about it yeah but that's kind of what I sense when I sense that flashback that she had 
a while ago because it looked like she was traumatized about something that happened in her past. And if I had to guess what makes sense to me, right? Why would I want to leave mm-hmm. my parents? Because she always talked about her parents being friendly to uh to our main character. She's like, yeah, my, my parents were fine. I'm just, she felt like she was the burden on them. So I feel like that's kind of the, the case. Which, uh, which is dark as fuck, I, but... I got I got the the feeling that um uh, that was like her sister. Right. Mm. Um, and I'm trying to think about like cause the only time I remember her saying like her parents her parents were friendly was when uh It's like the very she was second talking. day or something like that they were standing together. So who was she talking to? I'm I'm thinking about the most recent one when she was talking to another person mm-hmm. and she was saying like, Oh yeah, the parent my parents are really nice and friendly. Mm-hmm. Um oh when she was talking to the other girl that like um our yeah, main yeah. character. Yeah. Co-worker. When they were sitting at the bench. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the coworker girl. She was saying, like, you know, my parents are nice and friendly, blah, blah, blah. Uh but really she was talking about our main character. So like She told she told uh, our main character about her parents though. And yeah, episodes, like, think. it was like episode one or two. She just had to get away. I'm trying to figure out, like, because I thought it was something more, but I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I, I could I be wrong. I could be wrong. I could be misremembering it, but that's what I. We're going to see because we both going to watch it. It's too good to not watch. <laughs> Absolutely. And if you're not watching it, watch it. It's real good. Real good. Um. So as for, as for that goes, a show that I've been. I planned on watching that I just kept putting on the back burner, but Tell kept telling us about week after week after week. I don't know why he didn't tell me it was so good though. Um the Saints <laughs> the Saints power is uh is omnipotent. Yeah, it's just good, man. This shit's good, bro. It I mean it's everything that Tell talked about in our previous episode. So if you listen to those previous episodes, I'm not gonna rehash everything that he said about it. Because everything he said about it was like to the to the T. Um but this shit is so good with a main character that's so likable with surrounding casts that are so likable. It's just mm-hmm. a joy. It's a it's a joy. I'm just enjoying it. Like I'm not you don't go into it expecting anything. You're going to really enjoy it even more because <laughs> it's, it's just like I'm chilling and I'm just like smiling all the fucking time. I'm like, man, this show got me. I mean, happy for what am I so happy for? It's just chill, though, right? Absolutely. That was the best part because it, it was like in this show, it's just super chill. And the only thing that kind of bothers me right now is the fact that in the latest episode, we feel like they kind of introduce what seems like maybe like some kind of antagonist, mm-hmm. but not even fully like, no, not he's even, not a, you don't even know if it's fully like an antagonist or not, but it's just like, it's going so smooth and you just, you're just happy watching it. Yeah. You like know? What, what made this so perfect for me though, is that I turned it on right after I watched the two episodes I missed last week of Vivi. So I turned on Vivi, I watched Vivi and I'm like, fuck man. Then I <laughs> then I turned into Saints Power. I was like, "Oh man, I needed this. It was a it was a palate cleanser because <laughs> Vivi got me in my head, man, running in circles." <laughs> we gonna talk about that in the second half of the show, so we can go to full spoilers on that. But yeah, I went from Tokyo Revengers to Vivi, and then from Vivi to the Saints, man. And I feel I feel good. I didn't want to put it down, but I had to record the podcast tonight, so I had to put it. Down. <laughs> it's real good, man. Yeah, it's real good. One of my um, I I love this power system too. The power system seems really intuitive, which is like kind of unheard of for for Isekai nowadays. Because Isekai, like the power systems are so in the background now, like it's crazy. But this one is like. It's it's established well. Um, I think the only other one that was been established as good is is um, jobless reincarnation because there's rules well, that they follow there well. Right. What, what's cool is that like it's in the title that she's powerful, right? Mm-hmm. But I also like the fact that they don't necessarily give away that she is the saint, even though that's who we're following as the saint. Mm-hmm. Um. And how how magic is done, how the potions are done, even the fact that cooking regular food is going to be able to be something that's amplified or can help nourish the body in right. a way that could seem magical. I just love 
how that whole process is done. Um, so it is cool because it takes things that we would normally do in our everyday life and recreates it in a in a game sense almost because those things are effective in games like when you play monster hunter you right. eat food to gain certain stamina points or attack points and it's cool it's just it, it's a very simple system overall but it's like okay everyone can do this and you can learn and become stronger to do this right but the saint can do this because of who she is um <laughs> the other character who is not necessarily the saint mm -hmm. I, I like her too and i want to see her actually do something because i love that they said that she can learn anything super fast i want to see what kind of stuff she can learn she right. is she the physical like the fighter type i'm just i'm just interested to see it yeah uh i it's a joy man it's a joy it's a good show it's a really good I'm show surprised. I'm surprised you like it. I, I I knew I liked it, but I was like, I don't know if Polo gonna like this one. Yeah, because I had it. It I I just I I judged it. I prejudged it just based off the like analyst tags. Um, looking at the analyst tags, it just didn't look like a a show for me. And it's I I don't know what it was about it. What what are the tags? Let me look. Maybe it's the uh. It has to be that that reverse harem tag. But it's not though. It's not like, at all. It's, it's not a reverse harem. It's not even close. So that's why I was like, "Nah, I'm cool. I don't. I don't want to see a bunch of dudes fawn over this poor girl." You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I want to stay away from that. <laughs> um, but no, it's not. It's not that at all. It's a. It's quite enjoyable, actually. Um. So you said you watched Two Year Eternity. What What are you thinking about that? Because I I have only watched that first episode. It took too long to get like somewhat interesting but it is like at a somewhat interesting point now okay although i'm not sure where it's going to go after this current episode because of how things ended um pure eternity as you already know it's about a, a a stone that was essentially given like life and then it the more it is um the more you basically invigorated, the more you stimulate it, the more information it gains and more emotion it gains, anything like that, it evolves. So it goes from a stone to a wolf to a person um, to a wolf that can turn to a person as well. And uh, now it's now evolved into what looks like a giant bear and possibly a little girl. Now, the sad thing is, is that in this current episode, well, I guess what, since episode three, they introduced a little girl who uh, is to be sacrificed to a religious sacrifice. And oh, damn. yeah, he, he follows her or the, 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 the stone wolf guy follows her um, essentially uh, because she finds him in the woods while she's being hunted because they're trying to sacrifice her to Onigoma, which is like this giant bear. Um, and basically she doesn't want to die. She's a child. She wants to live forever. Right. Um, I'm not going to spoil everything, okay, good, but good. basically he comes in and kind of saves her. Interesting. And then where the current episode ends off, uh, I, I don't really know where they're going to go next because of how things ended. You know, yeah. like he saved her, but where are they going to go now? Okay. Okay. So I have a, I have a, a, a game for you. I didn't tell you I was going to do this until just now. Uh oh, you ready? Let me drink some water first. Yeah, yeah no problem. So I'm going to start off. It's going to be just following these anime that we've watched so far. Okay. Um, and you have to choose one. I'm going to give you two. You have to choose one. And then whichever one you choose moves on to the next round essentially okay i'm not writing this down i'm, I'm i thought of this uh, earlier today i'm like i'm gonna try this but i didn't like plan it out properly so just bear with me okay okay so here we go you haven't seen mars red correct mars red no yeah, okay 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 so i'm gonna just start off here um we are going to talk about my hero in the second half of the show we are going to talk about uh vivi we are going to talk about tokyo revengers so we're not going to talk about that now, but I'm going to ask you these questions, these series of questions. You ready? Okay. Let's do it. Uh, my hero to your eternity. Pick one. Right now? Yep. Just pick one. As, <laughs> as they are. As they are. Okay. <laughs> Damn. 
Uh, I didn't think my hero was going to be going that fast. Uh, have you watched any of the um, Full Dive? I have not, not yet. Okay. To Your Eternity or Saints? The Saints Power. Saints. Okay. Saints or How Not to Summon a Demon Lord? Omega. Saints right now. Okay. Saints or Haji Hero? Haji Hero. Haji Hero or Osamaki? Haji Hero. Ooh. You built different. Haji Hero, Vivi. Vivi. Vivi or Tokyo Revengers. <laughs> Got his ass. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> Vivi. Wow. Okay. 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 Um. Yeah. That's that's that, it. That's harsh, bro. <laughs> I only I only put uh Tokyo not Tokyo Avengers I only put uh To Your Eternity above My Hero because the last like two episodes are really good. Interesting. And my, my hero has bothered me this entire season so far. Man, two seasons in a row we feel the same way. Uh, we're gonna say that for the second half of the show, so stay tuned for that. <laughs> That's crazy though. So I was not expecting Haji Hero over Osamaki. Here's the thing, is that I do like Osamaki, but I'm not as the story isn't as emotionally investing to me mm, mm. as Haji Hero because, like, I want to see her overcome her trauma. Yeah. Right. So to me, that's more em- enveloping and more important to me than what Ozumaki has. Now, obviously, I want to see the ending of Ozumaki. I want to know when our girl gonna gain her gain her um, go of her amnesia and stuff like that. But it's it's just it's a lot. But I'd rather have I if I had to choose between which one I would stop watching right now over the other. I'm I'm watching Haji Hero. I'm gonna let Ozumaki go. Mm, mm. So I mean, the, the reason why I did that is because I wanted to see your level of uh, your level of of what you prioritize as far as these stories go, and it, and it looks like to me you are prioritizing uh, probably depth, which is uh, not unusual because I know. Uh, yeah, but also between Vivian and Tokyo Avengers, they're both very oh depth heavy. God. Yeah, very, very, <laughs> <laughs> very, very, very. It's like a, it's like you can't go wrong with either one of those. Yeah, so that was a good uh, one. Though. Uh, I don't say also just to throw in some no depth at all. <laughs> I just watched uh, like eight episodes of Baki. Oh God, bro. <laughs> 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 it is more meathead than Dragon Ball. Mm. And I mean Dragon Ball Z. Like it's literally in there like, hey, throw hands. That's it. Oh yeah. That's, I absolutely. That's the entire series. And it's like, am I mad at it? No. But the the art style. <sighs> no, thank you. It, the thing is, there's no way to be that size and and make it humanly possible to fight the way they do. <laughs> they will be tired after three punches. Bro. Absolutely. And muscle, it's just, literally muscles. That's it. The fighting styles are actually pretty cool because some of them are real, but it's also like they don't even do them properly because like ain't nobody that big that flexible. <laughs> it's not possible. Crazy. It's not happening. I don't even know why they're doing it that, like that. Give us some realistic fights. Like give us Bruce Lee, but don't make him like super jack. Like what made you watch Baki? It, I just wanted something to to rip apart. Okay. <laughs> That's gonna be a. It, uh, it doesn't sound good. The characters don't look good. Yeah, uh, that's gonna be Nagatoro for me. Now it's not that it looks bad. It's not that it sounds bad. It's just fucking bad. Like I, the the whole character interaction between these two main characters are the most obscene fucking weirdo shit. Who who said? Oh, black black and Aaron from Black Anime Podcast. He said, "Uh, it gotta be some weird kink shit going on with like this." type of show because it just none of it makes sense like, yeah if you like somebody all right yes i understand in elementary school you don't understand what like means so you tease the other person i get it 
but this these people are in high school so <laughs> i don't understand why she feels the need to literally clown this dude but yeah get jealous when other other girls touch him do all the shit that you know when he say hey why would you why would you take me to the beach that's something you do with couples why would she get upset about that because he's not going to assume you're a couple because all you do is fucking tease him all goddamn day right so she get mad at him for saying that we're not a couple and he doesn't even have a fucking clue of any inkling of a liking because he thinks that you just bother him but he's just happy enough that you're talking to him so it's like it's such a fucking weird situation because i i don't i don't i don't know why it's like glorified in this in this case right like why is this story being told as a glorification of a romance slice of life anime when this shit is just a bully traumatizing another kid <laughs> yeah it, bro i don't get it man i don't get it, it doesn't uh, is it entertaining i guess look i tried to find that because i was gonna watch it so we could talk about it today and then i just realized the more that like i tried to find it like Maybe not. <laughs> the, the more you didn't want to. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, you you good. You good with that. You know, after and the thing is, after you explain like the first two episodes, I was like, oh yeah, nah. If Bro. Polo don't like it and it's like a slice of life esque anime, there's no way I'm gonna like it. Man. There's no way. It just has me. It just gives me that uh, you know, the face that black people always make when when you see something crazy. What the fuck. <laughs> y'all, y'all, that is, y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all listening? Hey, y'all did it. Y'all, y'all did it. Y'all did the face too. <laughs> hey, it gives me, it gives me those vibes 100. percent Like, just stop, just stop. It's unacceptable. Absolutely. I can't wait to um, to rip uh, Eden Zero Part Two. I'm, I'm waiting for some more episodes that I to stack up to maybe try. Yeah. How about we binge that once it's finished, mm-hmm. and then we just do an antagonist. Absolutely. I mean, if we need to do the antagonist, right? We may not. We may like it. <sighs> doubt that. Doubt that. Um, you, know, you ever like just the, the the cap? You know how they be throwing the cap around on Twitter? Oh, yeah. The, they, the, they love that. The ash catching the ash catch them cap. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's that right there. We might. We definitely gonna need that one if you're saying. Yeah, I was talking shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's get to know my check wife wife. Let's go. All right. This is the part where we get to know my check wife wife fool. Where one of us rolls a random number generator, the other reads a question associated with that random number. Um, I don't remember whose turn is whose. It's it's my turn to roll the random number generator. All right, my turn to read the question. So whenever you're ready. How many questions we got, bro? Seventy nine. Oh, sheesh. I know, right? Thirty two. Hmm. Uh. What is the anime that you've rewatched the most and how many times? Great question. Easy question for me. Yeah, you go first. Okay. ReZero. It, I've watched this show uh, about... F- uh, I watched it subbed three different times. I watched it dubbed twice. <laughs> um, and I'm about to rewatch the dub of season two again. So, yeah, I've watched it. I watched this one all in total of about uh, what seven times. Six, yeah, I think six times. I think I've watched the first season of Re Zero probably like four or five times, and watched uh watched uh the director's cut once. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was seven times. Is the director's right. cut? <laughs> But I know that I've watched like regular Full Metal Alchemist. I've watched that probably like six times alone. Mm. And then like Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. No, I've watched regular Full Metal Alchemist more than six times. Uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, I've watched three times. That's crazy. I'm trying, I'm trying to think. Cause I know there's some more anime I've watched a lot. Uh, Shiver of Fell Night, that's probably the one I've watched the most. Mm. I know I've watched that probably like 14 times. <laughs> Just hoping for more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I watched, uh, I watched Clannad tw- uh, four I times. Yeah, I watched that four times. Like, that's, and that's season one twice and then after story twice. 
How could you? I don't know. I don't know. What like, kind of damage do you have in your um, heart well, to be able the to first, do that? But bro? it was it was the first time was the first time, and then the second time, actually, I watched that shit more. No, yeah, no, it's, <laughs> I watched it three times, both both of them three times. So yeah, because first time was the very first time I watched it, and then a couple of years after that, I watched it again, and then we did it for the review. So yeah, never, never, yeah, that was, ne- never. That's painful. Never. <laughs> it's it, it. The thing is, is that like, honestly, it's an anime. It's a it's a great anime. Mm-hmm. Like, no, the art style. Like, even when I look at the art style, like I think about it now, the art style to me isn't even that bad. No, it's, it's not. just it's like, beautiful. The eyes are a little big, but yeah. But it, I mean, it's it's stylistic. So why does that even matter? I right, guess right, like right, 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 right. But like, it's a good anime. It's a really, really fucking good anime. But never again. <laughs> I just know. I Myself through that. I want you, if if Apollo came to me, it was like, "Daddy, I think I'm gonna watch Clannad." I'm like, "Hold up, make sure I ain't around." <laughs> Give it like five years, bro. Yeah. Grow up a little bit. Get your emotions intact before you start going through that kind of stuff because right. you're gonna be stressed out. Stressed the hell out. Yeah. All right. Well, when we come back, when we come back, we are going to talk spoilers for My Hero, spoilers for Tokyo Revengers, and spoilers for Vivi. So stick around. If you watch any of those, we're going to go into full details of those shows. Remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel. The YouTube link is in the show notes. Um, or if you're watching the video version of this podcast, thank you and subscribe to the YouTube channel. We appreciate you. And uh, we'll see you in a little bit.
welcome back to episode 100 of my check waifu waifu i'm at polo born fly on all social media that's at king telling on all social media make sure y'all follow us there and follow us on our social media at my check waifu hey we are about to go into full spoilers let's start off with my hero if you don't mind let's do it um we're gonna start off with my hero we're gonna go full spoilers we missed two episodes last week because the episode didn't air um, when we recorded because we recorded on a short week so uh, tell what are you what are, what are your thoughts of the last two episodes which was class three or no uh fight match three and then my match three conclusion my hero is disappointing right now like in general like I, the thing is, is that the this episode wasn't actually that bad. It was all of the recap that takes place every single episode. Yeah, we don't need it. No, no, we don't. Uh, we don't need it. Four and a half minutes of recap. So I've I've been timing these ever since like episode. What was it? I think it was two that fucked me up, mm-hmm. or one or one or one or two will fuck me up real bad. I think it was one, but. Regardless. And then how long is the intro? A minute and a half. Yep, minute and a half of the intro. Outro, minute and fifteen seconds. The only thing, good thing about match three conclusion, which is the most recent episode, was that they didn't explain any quirks. So, like, yeah, they just showed them hot and cold. Yep. Tetsu. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but, but man, but let's go. Let's go to match three. Match three was the one before this one. Match three was so fucking annoying because it dragged and dragged and dragged so many mm-hmm. so many cuts to some bullshit that we didn't need to see like the whole Todoroki thing was cool once they didn't need to show us three times like and then they did the thing where they showed up they explained the courts and like I said on Twitter to Crystal like yo you don't need a minute to explain the courts of each person <laughs> of all four of the other of class B so that's fucking annoying. But man, but I will say this. Match three conclusion. Yep. Made me happy as fuck. Cause it was so yes. good. So good. It was like 13 minutes of pure just fucking bliss, bro. I'm like, this is what my hero is about. Fucking ingenium. Yes. <laughs> like this dude is flat. And that animation too. It's Beautiful. Bro, it was so good when he was zooming through his yep. axe kicks and everything, his chops to the back of the head. Even like I even liked his dialogue because they were like, like when they pointed out the fact that um, even when he's when his engine is boosted up, he even talks faster. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, that's a good point to make yep. because it's a it's a character thing that happens. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was dope. I thought that that was the kind of thing that made me like enjoy the episode. But there was just so much like. I guess recap that I was like, goodness gracious, yeah. you can move on. Because but that fight with Todoroki versus Tetsu Tetsu. Man, Todoroki versus Tetsu Tetsu was uh, probably my favorite part because that shit was <laughs> him pushing past his limits, quote unquote, was fucking fire, pun intended. Like, right. It was so good, dude. I'm like, man, Todoroki is legit a really good character, even though he, he's supposed to be that, that dry, bland, you know, typical Not. Sasuke-esque character. He's supposed to be, you know, supposed to be. Like, that's his, his, his character style. He's not at all that, mind you. There, right. So that's why I think it's so important to know that, yes, you can have these brooding characters like a, like a uh, what the fuck, you know, or like a Sasuke but they can still be written well. They can still be shown well. They can still be good characters and, and actually mean something to people. Like Todoroki is, is a really fucking good character, even though he has that characteristic of that brooding type. And what's really cool about him is that like in those moments where like, okay, he's brooding, whatever, but he has his funny moments yep. where they just like make him like this ditzy, goofy character. Yep. Even though you think you assume he's super serious all the time, he make him like this ditzy character sometimes. It's like, oh, that happened. But also, like when they uh brought back the um the the flashback of Momo, where he mm. was like, you know, I assumed you already made the plan. Like he understands people, yeah, and he understands like how they think and how they operate. He knows who is better than him at what. It goes to show that he has deeper and more depth overall than what you may think. And he's constantly battling already within himself to be a better person and be more than what he was already gifted with his father. Excellent. So it's like, what I, he's, he's dope. 
He is. What I love about him too is that he's he's always so willing to give flowers. Like no matter what the situation is, he will give the credit, like give credit to other people for being either better than him or worse than him. And again, that shows character growth to me, <laughs> like and depths, like for that matter too. Like he give Deku his flowers. He'll give Momo her flowers. Like he'll, he will give people the flowers they deserve for being just great and better. <laughs> so he he's a great character, but what man class B got some fucking headers. Mud man, bro. First of all, that's busted. He's busted as fuck, dude. He can swim in that shit. For one, his character and costume makes sense, which I absolutely love. It's like a scuba suit, which is fucking incredible. Mm-hmm. And then what he does with it, how he uses it, is so dope. Well, he it's can, also he can be like crazy. top five hero. I think he like could, in the future. Easily. Yeah. Easily. I don't even know how he made it to class B. How, why is he not in class A? <laughs> right. Like we got Grape Rush. Come on, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. And no, don't get me wrong. Grape Rush don't have the worst quirk. It's a really good rescue quirk. Yes. But Mudman could rescue people. Yes. He can do mad combat potential. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. Like, could you imagine there's a fire on the ground and he's like, okay, we just turn all the mud and let the fire get <laughs> suffocated inside the mud don't you know get he's shutting down villains in an instant almost like if a villain don't have the capability of coming out of cement or metal or whatever it is that he can melt they're done like he's like, insane imagine him versus gentle right where gentle could bounce off of like anything he touched or even the air sometimes yeah. it didn't matter okay you yeah. touch the ground i'll turn all the shit in the mud now you can't do anything bro Yep. <laughs> it, Shut that shit down. All of it is 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 ridiculous. Yeah. What I, I kind of, I'm kind of sorry what they did to my dude with all the arms though. Oh, Octoman. Yeah. yeah they caught him. They kind of did him dirty. But I I, yeah. I, do, I still think he's a good hero. I've always thought he was just because of the way he way he acts and 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 the way he uses his quirks. Um, I think his quirk is one of the coolest. Yeah, me too. Me too. Because. <laughs> Any body part slept on. He slept on. He he can have as many arms as he needs to. He can have as many ears and eyes as he needs to. Exactly. It's like he like when um they snuck up behind him and he had the eye behind him to see mm-hmm. what was going on. Come on, bro. You can never sneak up on him. It doesn't right. matter. Right. So yeah. And then of course the the kung fu dude. What's his name? I forget his name, but he's dope too. Oh, the tail. Yeah, yeah I, can't, I can't remember his name, but that that uh that shockwave he did in the yep. mud. Yep. You didn't see that <laughs> coming. I'm thinking, either. bro, you about to get you getting manhandled already. Like you might as well go ahead and wrap it up. You, nah. you can't do that in here. But the star of of that fight, obviously, is the chick mm-hmm. with the horns, man. Yes, one hundred percent. She's fucking dope, man. She's. The- I don't even know what the hell she does, like really for real. Even though they explained it, I was still yeah. like, "What?" <laughs> I, okay, so it's actually funny because I think her character is supposed to be from like the Netherlands or something, mm-hmm. and she doesn't speak in Japanese. I don't think. Yeah, it's like it's like a mixture of the two of uh, like, um, yeah, what's that Dutch or some shit? Yeah, so she speaks in two different languages, and it's like it's like cool because it's like the whole time you hear her, it doesn't sound quite Japanese. I absolutely love it. And it's like they have they got a real like Dutch or like Netherlands person to speak her mm-hmm. her language. I'm like, yo, that's so cool. I love it. Yeah. Um, and uh, her 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 quirk is actually really cool because she controls the four horns mm-hmm. and she can repel them, make them fly. And she she's super smart because yes. she she they were she was by herself basically. Everyone is knocked out, and it's one on one. And she's like, nah, bro, let me go ahead and. Uh, <laughs> Try this out because I can't lose like this. All right, well, well, the next fight is Bakugo and who who is Bakugo facing? Uh, I mean, I don't think they showed exactly who he, who he facing, but it's I can't remember. They, I, I know how this, I know how this episode is gonna go though. Oh, okay, okay. I love it though. It looks clean. I can't wait to see Deku's fight, which is gonna be three more episodes from now. But <laughs> maybe. They they gotta they gotta fill these twenty five episode quota, bro. That's Not if it goes like how the manga went. <laughs> if the man, if this next episode goes like how the manga went, <laughs> it'll be good. It'll be really good, actually. Oh, clean. I, clean. I, I probably won't even. I probably won't even mind the uh, the recap. 
Wait, so, so I'm don't say nothing, but Baku about to blow him back, huh? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. You ain't gotta say nothing. Anyway, the but, explosion murder. <laughs> let's uh, let's move on. What you want to move on to? Uh, let's see. Tokyo Revengers. Let's let's go. Man. This show messes with my heart. I can't fucking believe how good it is. Dude, it it can't. I can't get over the fact that it's this good though. Like for real. Um for one, Draken is the man. Um oh, he is so good. Draken is is which is weird because I never thought I would like him. Like when I when I mean, they first introduced him, I didn't think I was gonna like him. I didn't they made him seem bland. Yes, yes, bland and just dry as fuck. But again, they gave it they gave us more depth that's like unseen for these like bully type big dudes. But nah, he's, he's a real one. Yeah. What's, what's um, funny about him though, Yeah, what's funny about his backstory, bro? I swear to God. <laughs> what's so funny about his backstory is that it's literally Yakuza like a dragon's backstory. <laughs> like almost, oh, really? almost to a fucking T. Like the dragon tattoo on his head. <laughs> well, not quite the dragon tattoo, but the way he grew up, how, how he was when he was a kid, being able to just basically beating anybody ass and just uh, being grown up in basically a soap land or, uh, you know, the, the equivalent of a, like a, posh, a prostitution brothel. Mm-hmm. It's hilarious. It's <laughs> so funny. Yo, they asked this dude, do you want to tell me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> bro, you are in, he's in oh elementary He's in the fifth grade, bro. Oh my God. Yo, pow. <laughs> it's um, so crazy. It's phenomenal, bro. It is. Um, they made me like Mikey more, but also I'm more skeptical of him now. Interesting. Because here's my thing. Because we knew we knew the kind of person Mikey kind of was, right? Like they 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 set his character in stone without letting us directly know. Like this is who Mikey is. Mm-hmm. So, um, they they kind of they show. He, he's like, yeah, since it's you telling me, let's, I'll pull up to this to the students with you, you know, and, you know, he ran up on the main dude, stomped him in the face. Right. And I'm like, damn, Mikey, you know, I think I like you. Like, that's was dope. about it. Yeah. Um, I, I love that kind of action. He was straight. He was straight with it. Um, But. I liked him even more, like when 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 I realized that, uh. Draken is kind of like the dude's heart, right? Like yes. how they put that. Like Draken is Mikey's heart. So Draken compensates for what Mikey lacks. Like Mikey lacks empathy. his happy meal. He got his happy meal and he was like, I don't want that shit. Why? And he got a flag on it. Draken's like, shut up. Boom. Throw mm-hmm. the flag on there. Instantly Mikey's happy. And it's like, just the, the dude doesn't have compassion. So I want to know more about him. Like what, what, what happened in his life to where the, that whole compassion aspect just kind of left. And he doesn't care any about any of that. He's just straight action. Um, but also, when we got to that point to where they were in the like warehouse area, and Draken's like, maybe you should hear him out, right? And he's like, you heard what I said. Like, are you questioning me? Like, mm-hmm. we literally said we gonna fight them. So is that what we doing or what? And like, they gave him that look, and I'm just like. Sheesh, bro. Like Mikey is not with it. Mikey is not letting it slide. Yeah. He he was he's like, look, I know who you are, but just cause you my dude don't mean like you're not gonna get put down like the rest of these people. And I'm like, Mikey is ruthless. That's what's so confusing about it all, right? Like what does Mikey have against these people to make him go th- through this, right? Like I don't this, so it doesn't it doesn't it wouldn't hurt to just step back, reevaluate the situation and then reconsider, even though the motherfuckers are pulled up at the end anyway, like we saw. But it wouldn't have hurt for them to do that. Right. Like, to just step back. and like, OK, let's let's kind of run through things real quick. This is the situation. And like for him to just because it ain't like Dragon said, let's not do it. You know what I'm saying? Like he didn't say, no, let's not fight him. Let's just let's just hear what he let's hear it out first. So. Right. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm concerned about it too. Uh, 
what do you think is going to happen? Because do you think this is how it happened for Draken to die for them to pull up as early as they did on him? I think that they pulled up, they fought, and then Draken did something solo that mm. got him killed. Because mm. Draken seemed like that kind of dude who doesn't want to draw everybody in. Hey, he probably was like, yo, listen, in this war, you could take me out kind of shit. Right. Yeah. And, and Mikey's like, nah, we're not having that. Right. Like, y'all, t- y'all taking my dude out? Yep. My dude? Yeah, nah, we're yeah. not having that. He lo- loses his damn mind. But, right. But what it also seems like is it also seems like that those other two dudes, the reason why Mikey and Draken are fighting is because those other two dudes are up to some other slash shit, too. Well, also, they're mad. They're hot headed, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, and they kind of let them do whatever, but it's it's because I think it's like they they respect those dudes to an extent, like they're at a, yeah. a higher level. Well, so, like, it's Takemichi, though. Like, I would have thought Mikey would have stepped up for Takemichi when it came to. I, I think they expect him to step up for himself. No, they because that's how that's how this game works. Like well, he, they know, he said, but they should know how Takemichi is at this point, right? Well, I guess they do because he stood up to what's his what's his the big old dude. Took it up to Drake and yeah. Yeah. Oh, and the other dude, yeah. So you might be right. Damn, I want I want to see what Takemichi gonna do in this situation, because <laughs> yikes, it looks like the fucking warriors in there. Yeah, but here's the thing. I think cause I think they're gonna work them dudes. <laughs> just the just the two of them? Yeah. Mm. No, I don't uh, the five of them. I don't know if Takamichi gonna throw hands, but I think they're gonna work them dudes. Interesting. I think Takamichi's in the way. I agree, but I still think they're gonna work them dudes. And they gonna they gonna beat up like the main dudes there and the whole other group gonna run. They like, oh, yeah, we good on that one. You saw you saw Mikey just did. Yeah, yeah. Mikey just just re stomp dude face in. Re stomp his face. Yeah. He did the, the A Town triple stomp on him. Tax. Yeah, now you might be on to something with that, to be honest. Cause uh, yeah, they they kind of gave us a hint of what Mikey does when they, when they showed him when he was little. So I wouldn't be surprised if the he did just put it. Put yeah, it down. Why, why, why wait for someone to attack you first? They're gonna jump you. Let's go right. ahead and get this get these fists thrown. Right. Good point. Valid valid point. All right. I love Tokyo Revengers. It's a uh, one of my favorite shows this season. But I'm with you, and I will say that it's still it's right on the cusp of 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 Vivian and and and, and like Tokyo Revengers. They're like right neck and neck for me. Uh, Vivian's fucking great though. I agree. Um, Vivian for me is not only like a compelling storyline. Yes. Over overall it, it's a compelling storyline great audio design yes um gr- great characters yes. um it's it's just animated well it just you. has a lot a lot going for it so for one this is again another, another two episodes of this show um uh, after what happened with the dude that committed suicide because he couldn't be with his AI wife after the island we come to find out that Vivi actually suffered a uh, a malfunction or a error they call it which is so fucking compelling like you said because he's a fucking AI and what's her mission her mission is to <laughs> make everyone happy with her singing and she found out, like we talked about, then we we talked about that part, not not this recent episode, but we talked about the part where she, uh, I think we predicted that, that mm-hmm. there was going to be something wrong. Yep. But she, but basically, um, if, if she can't succeed at her goal, what happens? Right. So you think it was her not succeeding with her goal or her, or her conflicting with her own, like, Conflicting with her own internals, right? Because well, well, no, because I think you said it was that like her her mission was to make everyone happy, but because 
she literally was the opposite, right? Dude told her, your song is basically torture for me now. Mm. It used to be love for me, but now it's not. So he committed suicide. That snapped something in her because that's the exact opposite of what her song was supposed to do. Right. So what what it did, go ahead. What I got from her was like the fact that she stopped the massacre of the humans, you know, her future proofing that she's doing with uh, his buddy AI. Mm -hmm. And the fact that her actions caused this much sadness to a human left her in a, in a conflicted state, I think. But I think right. I, well, that's what I thought initially, but what you just said, what you just said, which you, cause you're over there makes way more sense. And I like it. Well, well, yeah, but like, I, I don't know. Cause I, I feel like what you said was, was pretty spot on. Um, that concept itself mm-hmm. is, is ridiculous. Um, <laughs> Very much because so. it, it's literally how like, it's, it's, it's to a much more dramatic extent of a human, right? Because, mm-hmm. like, imagine a human who's trying to do something good. Like, you're trying to go out and save the world. You're a humanitarian. Right. And you're like, hey, let's go to Africa and, you know, help build new homes. And you build a house right. to, to, like, for an orphanage or something. And the house caves in and kills the entire orphanage, right? Jesus Christ. That's, yeah. dark. that's dark. Yeah. But that's the exact opposite of what you did, though, mm-hmm. what your goal was. So what, how would you feel? You would probably never go and build another house again. Even if, you're, even if your only job for that was to just to screw in one little screw, yep. you would never go build another house again. You're like, nope, I'm good, because now you're traumatized. Yep. She was so traumatized, she erased that from her mind. Yep, and completely turned into Diva, the songstress, di- the songstress Diva, which is interesting because, yeah, she was like... Yeah. When I, when I was it, watching that it shit, made her better. It, I mean, it made her essentially better because it cured her issues with not understanding the, the heart or whatever or singing with your heart. But like when I was watching it, I was confused as fuck. I'm like, yo, what? Hello? <laughs> At first, I'm like, what, what, what's going on here? But obviously with the way this sh- how fucking well written the show is, it, it was going to be explained to me. And when it was explained to me, I'm like, oh, fuck, that's killer. Because how many yeah. years has passed, right? Like, it, but but she's sixty one years now. Sixty one years, yep. So was, was that like almost twenty something mm-hmm. years that went by? Mm-hmm. Nuts, man. Yeah. Nuts. And to to think that <laughs> there's still more to do. <laughs> yes, there's still so I'm much just, more to do. I'm just like, damn, Vivi. But now she has to stop another AI from committing suicide which that in itself is like so now not only we already knew ai could develop some kind of emotion right we, mm-hmm. we saw the most basic form of the ai where they were in um on the the steel or the metal island right or the metal fortress island that basically where some of them were just workers and that's just what they did they were workers and they try to figure out problems Bro. to now the ai can actually have emotions to where they feel the need to be relinquished from this life. It is so good at setting up the timeline because we're going through the timeline of Vivi, right? Of her entire like lifespan as an AI. She was one of the first entertaining AIs. Now we're watching the the evolution of all these different AIs. And then what's so cool about it is what she's trying to prevent is certain evolutions from going too fast because this, like you just said, the, uh, this AI is thinking about committing suicide, which would be the first time that an AI felt the need to end its own life. In reality, we kind of know that that's not the actual case, but just, just think about that. Like we have to prevent this AI from committing suicide because now that's going to cause this whole chain of events that could still lead to the war against humans, which is fucking nuts, man. And, and when you think about like an AI committing, committing suicide, right? Like, at that point, you you essentially created something that feels like it has its own life. Yes. You already lost. <laughs> that's it's crazy. That's man. crazy. But as we um, know, in that second episode, it's not mm-hmm. it's not really her. Yeah. She's been taken over, which happened yeah. after her performance. Which is rough. Um, yeah. And the. The thing that kills me about this is that like 
they give us the whole spiel about her, her sound designer. Um, and yep. I'm just like, hmm. yeah. Oh goodness, it's they, um, they... <laughs> dude. Have you ever seen Selena? No, have I? You probably have. You just probably wouldn't remember. But Selena is based off that true story of of the uh, Mexican singer singer Selena, and the oh, way it, yeah. yeah, the way that goes is that. She sings her ass off. She's fucking incredible in both Mexican and American like pop culture. And she's becoming one of the most famous singers ever to the point where her her manager, which was one of her quote unquote number one fans, decides that she's going to take her life. And that's essentially what this is like. Yeah, <laughs> somebody. Oh goodness, it is a parallel. Huh? It's, it's oh such a God. fucking parallel. That's what I was thinking. I saw it. I'm like, oh, this is this fucking Selena all over again. Like, it's literally that that case, but instead of like, I don't know. I don't know why he feels the need to end her life yet. Obviously, it's going to be explained to us this next episode. But yeah. it's so gut punching because that that little girl's voice was beautiful, man. Beautiful. I love the way yeah. she sung. You know what kills me about uh, Vivi? What? And I've said this already. It feels like every like two or three episodes, they give us a finale worthy episode. Yeah, it's like yeah. that's what it is. It's like they give yes. us a chapter of what's happening. And these three episodes are a chapter, and then mm-hmm. it's like that chapter ends, and they hit you with this finale level episode. You're like, oh my god, this shit can't get no better, and it does. We the only ones talking about Vivi on the time. Like, we need, like to, we we are, need to talk man. about Vivi more, and they they, they sleep. I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to put this out for the clip on YouTube, even though they ain't gonna get no views. <laughs> I'm gonna clip cool with, just just because this conversation, Vivi is is important. I think it is. It is a greatness. Like, and if you're not ready for depth, if you're not ready, damn, I think I know the episode of this title. I mean, this title of this episode. But if, if you're, you're not, not ready, ready for, for depth, yeah, if you're not ready for depth, then I don't know. I don't know if this is the show for you because it gets if you not if you don't pay attention, you will get lost. Because what I notice is that it's so much fucking dialogue. Like you can't. It is, but it's, it's good dialogue. Absolutely it's necessary. Compelling. Yes. The the opposing sides are always going to give you something that makes sense. Um, mm-hmm. None of it. None of the dialogue feels wasted. Yes. They give you callbacks on the dialogue. Everything makes sense. You can't and miss anything, like, though. Yeah, <laughs> the dialogue is important. It's so good. Right. It's incredible. Yeah, it's crazy. Such an incredible show. Vivi is, again, it's easily one, like, in Tokyo Revengers 2. Like, one, two. It's like a, so close that it's like, it's like, a, you know, real, real fucking close. Uh, what, I, what I see on the timeline, some, someone was sleeping on this. That we said that, the, someone said that this, t- this season, the anime is actually very good, but it's slept on. Like, yeah, people very, aren't, aren't praising this season, but this season has actually been really, fire. really good. Yeah. It's been real fire. And there's a lot of shows that you don't, that people that don't explore wouldn't even pay attention to. Like Haji Hero or Samaki. Like people wouldn't fucking watch that. Maybe Haji Hero more so because of uh, the, like the, I guess, edgy or etchy scenes that they had at the beginning. Maybe it's more so compelling, but nah, dog. It's only like one yeah. scene of that, which is awesome. You know what I think I'm going to do? What? Um, I think, well, I think we should do this. I think we should make a list of like this season's watch list and make it like watch this anime from this season and watch this as a priority because this is like the best one of the season, like according to us. Our personal, yeah. Uh, like a make check, Mike Check Waifu Waifu uh, seasonal anime list. But yeah. you should watch. And then I'll, I'll make a list and then I'll send it to you. You revise it. Send it back to me. I revise it. Send it right back to you one more time. Like, bam, you like it. Throw it up on the website. Boom. There you go. Yeah, that's the play. And then we'll, yeah, we could, we could go over that like next week. So I forgot to fucking mention this. God damn it. Uh, real quick. I'm probably going to, um, probably going to edit this and put this at the beginning of the show. So let's go ahead and have this conversation real quick right now. So, okay. Last week, like we talked about, um, shout out to the question from uh, so very unrelated. She asked us what was going to be our next long form show that we were going to watch. So 
right. we decided to put out a poll. We put out a poll on Twitter. Um, and the poll goes a little bit something like this. Which long form episode we're going to watch next is between Gintama and Soul Eater. The final it's obvious which one won. Yep, yep. I, uh, I put it up for three days, so it was long enough. And with 53 votes, 68% of the timeline says Soul Eater. And uh, 32% said Gintama. So, thank goodness. We're going to watch Soul Eater. We're not going to start it now. We'll let you know when it starts. Um, but, uh, yeah. What you, how, how you feel about that? Uh, I mean, uh, that's cool with me. I think uh, you're going to enjoy it since it's your first time watching Soul Eater. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to enjoy it, too. And I'm going to be, I'm going to try and be extra critical since this is like my fourth watch there. Damn. Okay, well, we'll let y'all know when we start that. It's coming up soon, probably in the next couple of weeks. But uh, we got some other stuff we don't want to try to have planned. So before that, anyway, yeah. All right, with that, let's wrap up. So we just finished talking about, boom, our next long-term anime watch through is going to be Soul Eater. Thanks for uh, winning Soul Eater so we don't have to watch 300 plus episodes of Gintama. Um, Before that, we also talked about Vivi. Come on, man. Y'all can't be sleeping on this one. Or Tokyo Avengers. Why why are these two so good this season? My Hero Academia. I mean, the episode last episode is kind of good, but the recaps are killing us. (laughs) We had that break. Let us know what you think about the song that we did on the break. And then before that, we had Mike get to know Mike check waifu waifu. Which anime have you rewatched the most? Uh, Polo and I got our favorites. Obviously, ReZero, we've watched both probably like seven, eight times a piece. Uh, Polo talked about Nagatoro. He ain't feeling it. Um, mm-hmm. I talked about Baki. I'm going to finish it, but guess what? I ain't feeling it. Uh, we also played Polo's game. I liked that a lot, actually. I thought that was pretty cool. I think I'm um. I'm going I'm to hit you with a verse next week. Hey, or a verse cool. card. Um, <laughs> we also talked about uh, To Your Eternity. Was not was not that good up until these last few episodes. Though. These last few episodes were really good. Um, Saints, Magic Powers, Omnipotent. Polo watched it. Oh, my God. Hey, I'm it was good. hey yo, I love that, too. Um, and then Higa Hero. That's another, another sleeper. Another sleeper for this season. Um, but yeah, that's episode 100 of Mike Check Waifu Waifu. I'm at Polo Born Fly on all social media. I'm at King Teliano on all social media. You can follow our social medias at Mike Check Waifu on Twitter and at Mike Check Waifu Waifu on Instagram. And as always, Mike, Mike, Mike Check. Check. Is that you? Is that you? Yeah. Don'ttalkshop.com. A brand that is anti-procrastination. A brand that we believe in. When it comes to following your dreams and goals. We believe that it's best that you don't talk about it. Be, be about, about it. Go to Don'ttalkshop.com and press start. Browse the shop. And use that offer code WAIFU15 to save 15% off your entire cart. Wear the chain. Wear the chain. Wear the chain. That's it. That's the one. We did it. Uh, is that you? <laughs> You're now tuned into Mike Check Waifu Waifu. Hollow and tell, is that 